Welcome to another video on how to pass the AWS Certified AI Practitioner exam. And in this video, we're going to discuss some of the most important concept that you must know to pass the exam. And these questions and this video is part of my new Udemy course on AWS Certified AI Practitioner, which will help you pass the exam. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the six sample question. The first five questions have been discussed in the first part of this video. So the question says, as part of the compliance with healthcare regulations, a large healthcare is exploring the logging capabilities of Amazon Bedrock. What kind of logs are available in Amazon CloudWatch for Amazon Bedrock service? Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the keywords. So the keywords that I can see here is logging capabilities of the Amazon Bedrock and it is looking at what are the kind of logs that are available in Amazon CloudWatch. And we have to select the correct option. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the options. So the first one is model invocation logging, model input data, model output data and metadata associated with all the calls. So this is correct. Amazon Bedrock sends all the logs related to model input data and which is essentially prompts. So the prompts you send to the model, the response you get from the model and the associated metadata is logged in Amazon CloudWatch. So this option is correct. So the second one is invocation latency. So it is the latency of the invocation. So how many milliseconds it takes to get a response from the model. So this is correct as well. This is logged in Amazon CloudWatch for the Amazon Bedrock service. Next, we have the invocation client errors. So number of invocations that result in the client side error. So this is correct as well. Then you have invocation throttles, number of invocations that the system throttle. So these metrics can be captured in CloudWatch as well. So finally, our last option is all of the above. So this is correct. All these metrics can be captured within the Amazon CloudWatch service. So from the exam perspective, you need to remember at a high level, which are the metrics that can be captured within the Amazon CloudWatch for Bedrock service. So if you want to look at all the metrics that are captured as part of Amazon Bedrock service, so you can just do a Google and you can see here, these are all the metrics that are captured within CloudWatch. Okay, so this is important. So please do go through all the metrics that are available for Amazon Bedrock service in Amazon CloudWatch. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the seventh question. So it says sometimes few examples a paired example input and desired output are provided as part of the prompt to help LLMs better calibrate their output. What is such an approach called? Okay, now let's take a look at some of the keywords. So it's talking about providing few examples, a paired example input and desired output, which are part of the prompt. And this is helping to calibrate the output of the LLM. So what is such an approach called? Now let's take a look at the options. So the first option is zero shot prompting. In zero shot prompting, we don't provide any example input or output as part of the prompt. And the question is talking about providing few examples. So this is incorrect. Now let's take a look at the second one. And second one is talking about fine tuning. So in fine tuning, we further train the pre-trained model to improve its performance based on the domain or a specific task. So we don't provide any examples as part of the prompt, but it's more about further training the pre-trained model. So this option is incorrect as well. Now let's take a look at the third option. And the third option is retrieval augmented generation. And we know Retrieval augmented generation or RAG is used to connect the large language model to an enterprise data source to get the relevant contextual information based on the user query. So this option is incorrect as well. Now let's take a look at the fourth option and it is few short prompting or in context learning. And this is our 
right answer. In few short prompting, we provide a few examples and that example could be an input and the expected response from the large language model to give it some contextual understanding, to provide it some in-context learning. So this is the right answer for this question. So now let's take a look at the eighth question. It says a startup is evaluating building its latest AI app on Amazon Bedrock. It will offer two kind of services to its customers. First one is free where startup customers can use the base model and other a fine tuned model for its premium customers. How does Amazon pricing work for base and fine tuned model? So it's basically trying to assess your knowledge on Amazon bedrock pricing. So now let's take a look at the keywords. So it's talking about building an AI app on Amazon bedrock. Then it's talking about two kind of pricing models for Amazon bedrock. So one is for the base model and the second one is for fine tuned models. So the first option is pricing for the base model. So base model provision throughput capacity pricing based on price per hour per model. So this is incorrect. We know that for a base model, it is based on number of API requests that you make and number of tokens consumed per API request. So this is incorrect. Now let's take a look at the second option, which is fine tuned model pricing based on number of tokens and API requests. So this is incorrect again for fine tuned models. The pricing is not based on number of tokens and API requests. That is for base models available as part of Amazon bedrock. Now let's take a look at the third option and the third option is base model. The pricing is based on number of tokens and API requests. So this is correct. And just remember 100 tokens are approximately equivalent to 75 words. Okay. Now let's take a look at the fourth option and it says fine tune model and the pricing for a fine tune model is based on provisioned throughput capacity pricing based on price per hour per model and you have three options no commitment one or six month commitment now remember when you fine tune the model within amazon bedrock and deploy it it will not be based on number of tokens and api request it will be based on provisioned throughput capacity so irrespective of whether you make any API request or not, whether you use it or not, you will still be charged per hour per model. And you can get some reduction if you make a six month commitment or one month commitment, but you can also make no commitment. You will be still charged on the provision throughput capacity and number of hours, not based on how many requests that you make. So this is important. Okay. Now let's go to the next question. And the next question says, which AWS service maps to compliance requirements to AWS usage data with pre-built and custom frameworks and automated evidence collection. Now let's take a look at the keywords for this question. So it's talking about an AWS service and it's talking about compliance requirements. So now you should think about all the compliance services that we have within AWS. And then it's talking about AWS usage data with pre-built and custom frameworks and automated evidence collection. So you, you have three keywords here. So you have to figure out which AWS service and it's talking about compliance. And then it's also talking about automated evidence collection for your AWS usage. So let's take a look at the options. So the first option is AWS artifacts. So please remember AWS artifact is a service where you can find all the documentation related to AWS compliance with various industry standards such as PCI DSS and many others. So in this case, it's talking about your compliance requirements, not whether AWS is compliant or not. So this option is incorrect. 
now let's take a look at the second one and the second one is aws trusted advisor so aws trusted advisor provides you recommendations against six different parameters such as cost performance security service quotas and some others but it does not help you with automated evidence collection so this is incorrect as well and the third option is amazon inspector and amazon inspector scans aws workloads for software vulnerabilities and unintended network exposure and this is mainly used for compute workloads such as ec2 lambda containers and so on so this is incorrect option now let's take a look at the fourth one and which is aws audit manager and is the correct option in this case because AWS audit manager collects data from different services within your account let's say such as cloud trail AWS config security hub and many other services and then it maps to some of the pre-built or custom frameworks that you might have selected so let's say you are in the banking industry and you need to be compliant with PCI DSS so it will collect the data from all these different AWS services such as CloudTrail, AWS Config, Security Hub and then map it to the pre-built framework and see if you are compliant. And the other really important thing it does is automated evidence collection for your audit purpose. Okay, now let's take a look at the last question for this video and that is a bank is looking for a generative BI assistant that will allow business analysts to use natural language to build BI dashboards. Additionally, business users should be able to generate multi-visual Q&A response and get AI-driven executive summary of dashboards and create customizable data stories highlighting key insights, trends and drivers through natural language queries. Which AWS service is the right fit for this scenario? So this is a really long question. Now let's take a look at some of the keywords. So it's talking about a generative BI assistant that will allow a business analyst to use natural language queries to build BI dashboards. And then it's talking about business user should be able to generate multi-visual Q&A responses and some of the other things like dashboard, etc. through just natural language queries so now let's take a look at the options so the first one is amazon q business and this is an incorrect option because amazon q helps you build an ai assistant for your business users and at the core of it it's just a rag based application with a large language model so it cannot help you build a bi dashboard okay now let's take a look at the second option so second one is amazon q in connect so this option is incorrect as well because amazon q in connect is mainly used to improve the productivity of customer support agents who are using amazon connect now the third option is amazon q in supply chain again this is an incorrect option because amazon q in supply chain is built for professionals working in the supply chain area with Amazon Q in supply chain, the supply chain professionals can write their queries in natural language and then they can get a response related to supply chain. So this is incorrect again. And then we have the Amazon Q developer and Amazon Q developer is used by developers within the organization to generate code, improve their code quality, security scans, upgrade the code versions and so on. So this is incorrect as well. And then finally, we have the Amazon Q in QuickSight, which is the right option for this question. So Amazon Q in QuickSight can be used to generate BI dashboards based on natural language queries, either by the business or the business analyst. So please remember from the exam perspective, you should be clear on all five of these and which one would be used in what scenario. Okay, that's pretty much it from this lecture. Thank you.